Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and I have a very simple and very quick tutorial for you today on how to quickly remove plosives from vocal recordings in Logic Pro 10. Plosives are low frequency buildup pops in a recording that are usually caused by P and B consonants in singing or spoken vocals. We can typically prevent these in recordings in one of three ways. One, you can use a pop filter, it's very simple. Two, you can angle the capsule of the mic away so that it isn't directly pointing at the singer's mouth, but sort of at an angle to the singer's mouth. Uh, but angling the mic can also alter the tone of the recording, um, so sometimes that's not always desired. In three, you can bring the distance of the mic away from the singer to avoid the proximity effect, which basically just states that the closer a source is to the mic, the more low frequency buildup it will have, so hence the plosive problem. And you don't just have to use one of these workarounds, you can try two or all three of them. But sometimes, no matter what you do, you can end up with plosives in your vocal recording or maybe you're working with an aggressive rap or rock vocalist where you want the singer to be closer to the mic, or maybe you're using a dynamic mic where, in that case, the singer really does need to be closer to the mic, and even a pop filter doesn't completely get rid of all the plosives. So let's give this a listen. Let's see what this sounds like. You and I could live the perfect life for each other. So you hear right here in measure two here, um, there's this pop, this plosive right there. The perfect life. The perfect. Right on perfect. So the P is what's causing it. And if you zoom in on that waveform, you'll see a big low frequency pop in the signal. The way we're going to get rid of this only requires one plugin and requires no automation whatsoever. So what we're going to do is drag over the area that contains the plosive. And I'm going to give this a little bit more wiggle room because we're going to have to crossfade and blend this back into the original recording. So I'm going to drag over this with the marquee tool and click on it to separate. And what I'm going to do is add the uh, channel EQ to our inserts here. And what I'm gonna do with the channel EQ is I'm gonna turn on the high pass filter here. I'm gonna roll down the slope, so it's a steeper slope. And I'm gonna pull the cutoff frequency up to about a little over 100 hertz. Now one of the things I used to do in live sound for singers in live sound was almost all the mics on stage were, were high passed at 100 hertz. Um, the problem in a studio recording with that is that you're going to get a much thinner sounding vocal because you're cutting all of their a lot of their low frequencies out. So we don't want to do that in a studio vocal, although it does work for live sound. So let me just drag over this. I'm going to click on this area right here to pull down my second toolbar, and I'm going to set my locators around that selection just so it loops that section over and over again. So let's listen to the before. A lot of low end content there. Let's kick the uh, the filter back in. And you can see that that low frequency content isn't there now. Now you can experiment with the, the actual frequency that you use and you can sweep this around and find a sweet spot that basically gets rid of most of the lows but doesn't destroy the tone of the vocal. There you go. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on just that clip that we created. We're gonna hit Control B. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna bounce in place that clip. So I'm just gonna leave the name as is, set the destination to new track, set the source to leave, and everything else, we're basically gonna uncheck everything, and then the normalization is gonna say off as well. Now, one of the things that I wanna mention to you about this is if you have any sort of volume adjustments done to the track and you include the volume automation, uh, volume and pan automation data, it's going to include that in there. If you have any other effects on the track, it's also going to include those other effects. So basically, plosive removing happens before mixing. It happens during the editing stage of working with the vocals. It's almost one of the first things you do after comping the vocals. So if there's any effects on your track other than the EQ that we just added, make sure that they're bypassed before bouncing. So then I'm just gonna hit uh, OK. It's gonna render down a new clip down here for us. And what you'll immediately see if we zoom in here is that low frequency pop is no longer there. We've got a pretty healthy looking waveform here as opposed to this up here that's got that nasty pop in it. So now what we gotta do is just uh, pull this up and basically replace our previous recording, pull the old recording over the other to overlap it. And now if you have the X fade drag option on it, it'll automatically cross fade the old and the new recording, which is pretty nice. Um, and we'll do the same thing from this side. We'll pull this over so it overlaps a little bit. And we've got cross fades on either side. 
All right, so now that we've got the clip bounced and moved back onto the original track, we don't need the channel EQ plugin anymore, so we can get rid of that. So let's just give this a listen and see how it turned out. You and I could live the perfect life for each other. So the plosive is gone and we've only affected that one small part of the track with the EQ. The optional step that's left is to drag over all of the clips and press J to join the clips together as a new consolidated audio region. All right, so that's how to remove plosives in vocal recordings in Logic Pro 10. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.